Are two PC stream setups a thing of the past? Let's talk about that. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and you're into PC tech stream tips and tutorials, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So stop on by, let's talk some tech, stream tips, stream PC builds, and whatever else. And uh, well, hopefully see you there. Anyways, let's get to the video. In the old days of streaming, before Ryzen was a thing, you needed expensive equipment to even think about being able to do a single PC stream setup and not have any major downsides. What that entailed was most more than likely Intel high-end desktop processors that were very expensive. Even a six core, like the i7-4930K or 3930K Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge CPUs were really expensive back on the in the day. They'd be, I don't know, five or $600 for one of those CPUs. You'd have to get a more expensive motherboard, um, more expensive RAM setup most of the time as well. And generally they use more power, so you need a more expensive power supply to run them all. Ryzen came and smashed all that. And to help things out a little bit, the NVIDIA NVENC encoder also massively improved. So we got a combination of a lot more cores available at cheaper prices and an improved encoder on a graphics card that lets a processor do more of what it needs to do to maintain gaming performance and uh, let's say stream performance and the graphics card handles the grunt work of actually encoding and sending out to Twitch or YouTube or to whatever service. It's a good thing that those old days are done now because while you still can get that sort of stuff, it still is very expensive. A Ryzen system now is more than enough. Something with six, eight, 12 or 16 cores in the main consumer platform is now accessible to everyone. And the Turing encoder that was introduced with the, well, the Turing generation of NVIDIA graphics cards, starting with the 1650 Super and up, has really, really made streaming from a single PC pretty much the way to go nowadays. The desire for a two PC stream setup from most people searching for that kind of configuration nowadays, to me, well, it's a little bit misplaced. The benefits to it, people think, is because you can get, you can maintain maximum performance of your gaming while also streaming, but you know, it's the other computer handling that, that stuff. Well, you can do the same thing now with a single PC for all the reasons I already mentioned. However, there are other factors to think about. What if your stream goes down? What if you have unreliable, I don't know, power sources. I guess there's other fixes to that, like backup power supplies uh, from like brands like APC or something. But just in case, what if you're just really worried about uptime? Having a second computer, like I guess a good example is if your main computer is overclocked and possibly prone to blue screens due to being on that edge of stability from game to game. Yeah, your main computer can go down and if you're a single PC streaming, your whole stream just went down. But if you had a second PC doing the streaming, well, guess what? Just switch over there real quick. Let everybody know, hey, my computer just crashed and restarting. Stream stays up. Everything keeps going. To me, that is the major benefit of a two PC stream setup. Now, I don't have complicated and really in-depth production like somebody like Dr. Disrespect or Sushi Dragon does. That is some crazy stuff that they got going on. And realistically, I could see the need for a two PC stream setup for streamers like those guys. And if you're going to be getting into all sorts of high-end transitions and production quality and things that require so much more processing power like that, then yeah, that also is a reason that a 2PC stream setup makes sense. Another reason is if you're an aspiring eSports pro or are an eSports pro and you really need the absolute pinnacle of maximum performance out of your gaming PC. Streaming all from one system is still going to have an impact but the configuration with NVENC and a higher core count CPU nowadays really minimizes that impact, but it doesn't eliminate it. And the only way to actually almost, you still don't fully eliminate it, but the only way to get that even lower is to go with the capture card into a second PC for streaming and possibly even NDI, but capture card is still the way for maximum game performance. However, I'm really, really whittling down to a niche to get to that reasoning for somebody who would want to do that. 
for your average person, for the majority of streamers out there, if you're streaming among us and in, a, in Discord, then yeah, you don't need a two PC stream setup for that. You can do that all through, from a single PC, that sort of stuff. I still have Stinger transitions, um, media playback, and all sorts of stuff in my streams. It's not that it's the simplest thing ever. There's still really cool stuff that goes on with my transitions and sound effects and all sorts of things, but uh, I can still do it all from a 12 core 3900X and a 3080. And before that was with the 2060 Super. And before that was with the 2060. The Touring NVENC encoder is just that good. <laughs> I gotta say though, if you really do want prefer maximum performance, then yeah, get a higher core count Ryzen, the 12 core or the 16 core, and you can switch to CPU encoding, go down to medium preset, drop some uh, some X264 options. I'll leave them I'll leave them down in the description below, by the way, and it could really help to up the quality of the stream without taking too much CPU performance out of it. But I was doing that for months and months, and. Uh, yeah, while it was an improvement, I switched to NVENC back, or rather back to NVENC as an experiment. And I was told that it did not look Excellent. all that different. Yay. Just a little bit different here. Oh, that's an offline follow on my Twitch. Make sure you follow over there. So like I said, NVENC versus CPU encoding on medium was still just a minor difference. Yes, the medium was a tad better, but for the most part, all the benefits that I got from my end and with minimal impacts to viewers end, made NVENC worth it and that you didn't used to be that way with the 10 series and below 10 series and below you didn't want to stream 1080p 60 for example with NVENC it just wasn't quite there yet CPU is still better but now definitely good enough I, I'm still not quite for 1080p 60 but uh, I'll drop a video link down in the description below for you guys to look more about that <laughs> I streamed for years with a two PC stream setup using NDI because all I had back then was a four core, eight thread i7 3770K, 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 970, right? So I needed NDI to really make games work acceptably. And uh, that helped the two PC stream setup in a situation where you have an underpowered main computer and possibly even a normal powered or not a really a normal powered non gaming computer as the second computer. It could be like a little office computer as long as it had four cores, even just four cores, four threads, but preferably four cores, eight threads and higher, it could still get the job done really well as a streaming computer. Yeah, as long as you had that combination of parts, two PC stream setup is still worth it because you're getting back that performance on your lower end main machine. But like I said, nowadays CPUs like the Ryzen 5 3600, six core, 12 thread, affordable level CPUs with higher core counts. Yeah, it's it's just starting to fall away a little bit. And I know that there are bigger creators out there like Jay's Two Cents who does not believe in two PC stream setups anymore as a result. I still have my test bench. My test bench used to be what I did all my two PC streams with. That was my NDI encoding computer. And now it just sits as just a traditional test bench to, to test parts with and test, do benchmarks and all sorts of stuff. And I find that I have a lot less use for it now versus before because, well, now I don't need a two PC stream setup. Single PC stream setup is definitely strong enough. If you're in that mindset that you need to have a two PC stream setup to be like a pro streamer, you need to clear that out. You need to, you need to stop thinking that way because one PC stream setups can absolutely uh, hang in there with the big boys now. Now, this was just a little bit of a ranty video for me because I still get tons of traffic on my easy two PC stream setup videos using NDI and lots of questions regarding what's good for a two PC stream setup, what are the specs the streaming PC should have, and all sorts of stuff. Again, I'll leave links to those videos down in the description below, especially the one covering specs for a, a second PC if that's what you needed. But like I said, there are situations where that's still a good idea to have, but it's nowhere near as a, a, a must as it used to be. So with that said, Hopefully you guys find this video useful or educational or anything like that. Um, if you liked it, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button as well. And again, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific and occasionally on other days. Just it all depends on how I'm feeling. 
Twitch.tv slash Coalition Gaming Crew. You want to talk stream setups with me? Yeah, get on over there. Or drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it there. We got lots of other content right over there. You want to check some of it out? Click one. You should click one. Have you clicked one yet? You're not going to click one, are you? Click one.